Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Charlie Zhu of Nordson Test and Inspection. I'm going to talk today about using AI in inspection of semiconductors. Hello, Edward. Thanks for having me. Charlie, we've heard about AI coming into just about everything these days. What kind of benefits are you seeing and what sort of challenges are you seeing with that? Sure. So we're in the industry in the semiconductor and the most specifically we're ma making test and inspection equipment for our semicon customers. So we have been trying AI about five to six years ago and we are seeing that, okay, it's becoming more and more feasible and it's starting to replace the traditional algorithms in our systems. So we are seeing benefit, our customers are seeing the benefit so we are seeing more and more widely use of the AI and machine learning in our systems and to solve customers' problems and in different applications. Any problems that customers are running into when they use us? Is this all intuitive or is it something that they really have to learn? Yeah, I would say that's some learning curve, but most common problem nowadays we're using AI to solve is defect classification, anomaly detections. There are many, many state-of-art AI models. It can be deep learning. It can be non-deep learning to solve different problems. And in my team, we are quite experienced based on the problem. We know what kind of model to pick up nowadays. So I would say we're seeing the benefits, like AI can significantly reduce the false cost and the escapes in inspection compared to the traditional algorithms. The only thing is because nowadays we need to train the model specific for each problem, I mean, that's kind of overhead that we have to prevent it from being widely used across all the customer base. Well, let's take a closer look. Sure. So Charlie, what are we looking at? Oh, here we're looking at uh, the specific problem we are trying to solve for our uh, memory customers in our AOI systems. So AOI stands for Automated Optical Inspection. Traditionally, we're using different machine uh, vision algorithms like a pattern matching um, block analysis to find the defects that current customer want to detect. But nowadays, we are trying to use deep learning models to find these defects. On the left side is basically a corner field uh, detection. So in the current packaging applications, they use a lot of under field to fix the chip on the um, substrate. And it's critical, the size and amount of the corner field or under fields. So we're using our AOI system to detect those uh, corner fields and measure the size dimensions of those corner field, whether it uh, meets the customer standards. On the right side is, we can call it anomaly detection. So we are especially looking at the golden finger or golden tabs on those memory modules. The challenging part of this one is because it's metal surface, you have different texture background. And that's really very challenging for the traditional algorithm. And so they can't differentiate whether it's just texture of the surface of the metal or it's really defect. But by training specific machine learning model, we can easily solve this problem and we reduce a lot, lot of false costs without any escapes for our customers. Really what you're doing here is pattern matching and you're setting that up for optical inspection, which is the workhorse of all inspection inside the uh, test facility. But when you're doing this, is there enough continuity, enough repeatability of the defects that you can say, this one's important to note, this one is not? Yeah, for this problem, we can achieve very good accuracy and repeatability. For both one, is they're not simple classification. Classification actually is easier to solve than these ones. These ones are more specifically, we call them segmentation algorithm, or sometimes we call semantic segmentation. Basically, it's trying to add, identify each pixel in the image, which object it belongs to. Right. So on the left side, it's trying to identify what are pixel belongs to the corner field. And on the right side, it's trying to identify what are pixel belongs to the those uh, golden taps defects. So 
usually we compare those, uh, like I said, with uh, pattern matching or blah blah analysis using those binarization techniques. And we found this deep learning is much more robust than those traditional techniques if they are trained properly. So you can tell which are the latent defects that will become killer defects and which ones are not, right? Yes, exactly. How does this work when you get into the context of a bigger system? So for example, putting a chip on a PCB. Yeah, that's exactly what, as you can see, here we train a specialized model to solve each problem. Actually, it's quite cumbersome. And that's also the biggest roadblock for our customer to adopt the deep learning more widely because each one involves NREs and specialized knowledge in their application. As you can see here, we're developing a generic AI model to solve all the PCB inspection problems. So what we are doing here is basically a segmentation model. But this segmentation model is not trained on a specific problem like a memory module or a power device. It's a generic PCB. So we feed it with a large amount of data from different applications. So what it learns is it tries to locate the feature of the components in that images. For example, as you can see, all the red part in this image, the output image belongs to the component body, while those purple ones belongs to the leads and the solder joints. And the blue ones are basically there's the sur their sub surface or substrate of the PCB. So we can actually add more features like uh, um, um, fiducials. So that's purely based on colored 2D images. With all this information, we are able to proceed with the uh, inspection task, like figure out whether the, the component is the right size and whether there's any missing components or whether there's damaged leads or any solder joint problem, missing solder joints. So that's kind of a general model. We can distribute this model to all the customers and they don't need to do their own training. It's already pre-trained and it can help to inspect their products. So we have tried some products that the model has never seen and never been trained for. And we are seeing a quite promising results that it can identify over 90% of the features on those unseen PCBs. So that's really encouraging to us. Any impact on speed of uh, inspection here? Is it faster, slower? That's a very good question. So, so for now, we do need a GPU, uh, a powerful or capable GPU in order to run these models. But as long as you have a GPU, and uh, we feel that we, we optimize our inferencing engine quite well. Uh, we don't see much impact uh, compared to those traditional algorithms in terms of cycle time. How about in terms of coverage? Is your coverage better with the AI model? I think currently this AI model, we can cover 80% of the problem. Some of the problem, because of now it's purely based on 2D, some problem like the corporality, we still need to use the traditional 3D algorithm to inspect if the customer require that kind of inspection. And can the AI also account for things like reflections and shadows? Yeah, that's another good question. So for now, we are using AI mainly for our inspection. So basically it's based on process the images. But what we are looking at as you are saying, exploring is, is whether we can use AI to improve our recon algorithms. So basically the way to generate the process, the 2D and the 3D images. But I would say this is still a very new area. We just started exploring. And the goal here obviously is to improve coverage all the way through and just make sure that you don't have any escapes going through as, as you do the inspection. But you also have the potential of being able to say, okay, when we're working with different materials like glass substrates or different materials on the chips, you know exactly how that's going to behave, right? Yes, exactly. Yes. As long as we can train the model, the same model 
and feed it with different type of material of substrates, and it should be able to learn. As we get down into much tighter dimensions with the advanced nodes, and particularly in advanced packaging, we're starting to stack these chips and bond them together differently. One of the big problems that's cropping up is voids. Can you use this technology in order to, to track some of these voids and understand what they are? Sure, glad you asked this question. We do have something to solve this problem. So this particular model is to try to find the voids in the stacking, all kinds of stacking. If it can be core walls or hybrid boundings or HBM, and from different sensing systems, here you're looking at X-ray, but it can be from ultrasound or infrared images. So basically those, like when in the computer images, they are all grayscale images. So it tried to find a voice, as you can see here, in those images. So again, it's similar as the, the AI model we talk about. It's a generic model to detect voids. Basically, we train a model and uh, we distribute the customer. Customer doesn't necessary to do any more training for their applications and it able to detect the voids. So in case there's any escape, we can do the transfer learning. So we have proven that we, we use our baseline model and deploying our customers. So initially there's some escapes because there's some new voice the model has never seen. And we just train some new samples from the customers on top of what we already have. And it's capable to learn and detect all the voice, include the new voice and the older voice. This is just a couple of the different technologies that you use for inspection, right? So now you have to be able to say, okay, what do we do with all this data? How do we work with this? How does AI start fitting in on all this different stuff? Yeah, that's a very good question. So actually, that's one of the problems we try to solve in Northern because in Northern ATS, we have a very complete portfolio for test inspections and based on different testing technologies, we have optical inspection, we have X-ray inspection, and we have acoustic ultrasound inspection. So allow me to show you that in this slide, so we're trying to use uh, different channels of input, basically different images to detect uh, defects. So it does require a very new model because none of those models in the state of art is capable of solving this problem. So it's very specific to us. And uh, for our competitors, they don't have these different type of sensing technologies. So that's not the problem they're really concerned to. But for us, because we have all this, we have all this information, we are trying to look at this information at, uh, with a holistic view instead of each individual images. With all this information, I would say a complete set of information, we can further reduce the number of escapes and false costs in our results. And the goal here obviously is to improve the reliability of these chips once they get into the market, right? Or even before they get into the market, improve your yield, improve your reliability and make sure that you know exactly what you're getting. Exactly, yes. One of the problems that in order to do this though is that you really have to work very closely with other companies. So you're working with your customers, you're working with your foundry, you're working with whoever is doing the packaging at, at some point. And the problem has been sharing data. Is that improving? Are you able to do this with small groups and say, okay, we, we now have the understanding about how this data is going to be shared and how to secure it? Yeah, so this is basically how we can share the data and also deploy the model to our customers. So we call it ML ops. So it's uh, like a knowledge of DevOps. It's the way how you actually getting the data from the customers, train a model and deploy the model to our customers. This is, uh, we can say ML ops or in the layman words, the workflow, how we work with our customers. So basically we will define the task and then get the data from our customers uh, by, so because they are using our systems, so now we have a, a common interface in our system, how to output the data for our machine learning tasks. Then there are multiple ways we can share 
we can either like because all we have NDA in place, and the customer basically can share their data wrapper with us, or we can create a wrapper in the cloud and make it private to both our customer and us. So in that way, they can share the data with us, and then we can get the data and the trend either in the cloud or on a local workstation. Once that's done, and then we can deploy that model to our customer through the similar way as we share the data. And we have the inferencing engine integrated in almost all the uh, test inspection products. So it's a common interface. So it's a common way of uh, sharing and deploying the, the model. So once the model deploy and they can do the inferencing, basically the runtime inspection using these models. But we do have some customers, particularly they're very concerning sharing the data. In that case, they want everything on-premise. So we can also accommodate, although it's usually incurring higher cost, engineering cost, but we can have everything trained and deploying in their facilities as they requested. But what we are more recommending to our customer is the first way which is more cost effective. And I think more and more customers, we're seeing more and more customers nowadays can accept that approach, which is more cooperative. So one of the things that is really interesting that's going on in the market right now is we're taking all of these different pieces. So all the AI connected pieces, and we're saying we can glue together all the different data here, even different data types using large language models. That's brand new, right? Where are you on this evolution here or even revolution? Uh, there are multiple ways using make use of the so-called large language model because fundamentally all these large, large language models are based on one um, space model called transformer. So I, I believe you heard that it started from a paper from Google called all you need is attention, right? Then Basically, you see all the larger language model based on those transformers. That's very different from the traditional convolutional network you see in the deep learning. And uh, on our side, we are also starting trying more and more transformer-based model in our applications, which appears to be very challenging for convolutional models. For example, just now we talk about those uh, reconstructions. The customer. For example, for the CT X-ray reconstruction, nowadays it needs to take many, many slides and in order to do a, a, a very detailed, the complete constructions. So what we are looking at is whether we can use those transformer, basically generative models to reduce the number of slices needed to do those CT recon. So that's a one area. I think that could be very feasible. The only challenge is the model can be very big. How we can make it practical and make it real time. I think that's kind of, it's, it, it will be a biggest challenges or risk um, for the industry to solve. Charlie Zhu, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you, Edward. Again, thanks for having me. It was great, it was great talking to you.